official still tied. No worries. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I am here because I like low testing a lot more than hockey, and I want to see. If <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, what we are going to present tonight here is uh, not a product demo of Low Runner and not a training session of Low Runner, the Low Runner but uh, kind of a case study of using Low Runner in a real project uh, that we did recently. So before we actually go into um, some introduction uh, part of load testing, um, can I know if anyone here has done any load testing work before? And if you have not done load testing work, have your company done uh, do any load testing work? Sometimes the developer or the people in the interest Right. So, um, yeah. Are you going to put the slides on oh, Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Yeah. So, um, let me give you a little bit of general concept of why we are doing uh, performance and load testing. The terms can be interchangeable, but um, they, they always mean the same thing, don't worry about it. Um, <coughs> so um, <coughs> the reason why we have to do performance or load testing on uh, an application or a system is because, because we want to see uh, how the system performs and uh, if the system is under load or stress, what the impact will be on the system and how the system will behave under uh, a load or a stress. And sometimes we do we, we call it performance testing because we want to do a benchmark of the system under test uh, to see uh, under a normal usage of the system how the system will perform. And whenever we talk about uh, performance, it always gets down to response time because that's uh, one of the most important uh, measurements that we have to get out from uh, the test. And during the course of uh, running the uh, load test or stress test or performance test, um, we are, uh, other than just trying to measure the response time of certain user actions, we will also at, uh, try to identify uh, any potential problem or obvious problem of the system uh, in terms of performance, not functionality. And uh, last but not, not least, um, uh, like I said, performance testing can be used as a benchmark uh, for performance of a baseline system. And um, if you were to scale up or scale down the application uh, in the infrastructure, then you can use that as a baseline and then compare the results. So here comes the test design part of uh, performance testing. Um, if we look at this table, you can see uh, on the left column we have a bunch of test scenarios. Those will always be the first step of any performance or load testing project is to identify the business transaction or the user scenarios that you want to automate. And um, normally we will have to talk to um, the business people or the users or actually get statistics from uh, the current system to see what kind of transactions are most frequently used uh, by the users and then we will uh, capture them down and uh, hopefully some of them are not too complex to uh, simulate in our scripting and if they are we will break them up. And um, also um, you can see in the, uh, in the matrix that um, we have different load for uh, different scripts and for this particular project um, it's not a large load that we are trying to accomplish it only hits up to 200 users and uh, we do it uh, in incremental manner so starting from 40 users and then uh, 80 and 120 160 and 200 and of course um, when we identify the scenarios, we will also identify the weighing of the usage. Um, for example, we know that um, a particular system, uh, most users will be 
reviewing their paychecks um, during the, um, maybe once a week or twice a week when uh, the, the, the peak usage. And then um, if only 20% of the users are doing um, adding time reports. A little bit background of this application, it's a, a people soft HR system. So the employees can check uh, to review their paycheck on, on the payday and they can submit uh, uh, vacation requests, time, uh, uh, time off requests, and things like that. And then the managers can approve their requests. So um, um, obviously, a lot of people will be just reviewing and, and um, checking their time report and not as much as any time, uh, time off requests. And again, not so much as the managers looking in and approving all the time. So you can see the weighing um, will be a lot higher for um, reviewing the paychecks and then a lot less when, uh, let's say, the managers are uh, just checking on their, their direct reports. And by the percentage, we'll have um, calculated um, the number of users for each different nodes. So for 40 users, we, uh, according to different percentage, we come up with the numbers and um, so on and so forth. It's part of um, naming the scripts. Um, it corresponds. Um, what you see here corresponds to on the left side. They are the scripts. It corresponds to these test scenarios that you saw in the previous slide. And um, let's see. Um, <laughs> just go back one slide. Still the same. So um, there should be the same number of scenarios there and the same number of scripts over here. And for each script, we um, we will have a unique name and kind of like a sequential number. Um, it's not mandatory, but um, it will be easier if you uh, have a standard naming convention for your scripts. So um, uh, or maybe you will use the script for different projects or for different platforms. So. It could be the same test scenario, same script, but uh, different projects, different platforms. So uh, the naming convention is not mandatory, but it will be quite helpful if you have some kind of naming convention. And on the right side, um, they are the transactions, what we call the transactions of um, each script. Uh, the reason why we have to have um, different transactions is because um, in Load Runner, when you do your scripting, uh, first, uh, the easiest way is to record um, your actions first, but of course it won't always work out. You, uh, you have to do some uh, uh, changes or, or uh, custom coding, things like that. But um, it doesn't put in any uh, meaningful transactions. So when you play back the script, it's just a whole bunch of funny uh, load runner transactions with different response time. Uh, and they don't correspond to uh, they they correspond to the action, but they don't show you unless you um, capture them as uh, a transaction. So let's say um, in Go Runner, I can I will show you in uh, the next couple of slides. Um, the code may have four lines to do uh, the login, and all four lines may have their their own response time. But um, when you look at the report. After you run the test, you will end up having four different response time for just logging in. So if you use transactions to group these um, different uh, different load runner transactions together to identify as one action, then you will have a more um, readable transaction response time when you look at your report. And um, the naming convention again is not mandatory, but uh, for the transaction, the naming convention may become a lot more helpful in uh, looking at the report uh, because if you don't have um, some sequential numbers, it will be quite overwhelming when you try to find certain transactions in the low runner graph. Again, I will show you the graph and uh, the low runner uh, response time result later, and you will see like you will see the big graph with. 30 or 60 transactions done at the bottom and it's so difficult to find which one is which. But with uh, uh, 